Greetings, 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 and welcome to the Pick a Card for the Winter Solstice 2021. I have not done a Pick a Card in a while, so this is exciting. I decided to do um, this Pick a Card because I don't know, this this Winter Solstice feels kind of, um, it's a powerful one to me. I mean, all of them are, but I'm just really feeling it. So, you know, I decided to go ahead and do this. And so before I start to pull the um, cards, let me give you a brief background on um, the winter solstice and why um, what these cards are representing here. So the winter solstice in a nutshell is the first day of winter. Um, it is um, considered the, the the coldest, darkest day of the year. And I'm, I'm saying considered, but it actually is the darkest day of the year. It's the day where we literally have the least amount of daylight hours and so it's darker longer than is daylight and that is why we see um historically like people putting lights on their houses you know it's not just a christmas thing it's you know um, this has been going on for thousands of years where (laughs) you know people will put lights on their houses or on their trees um to to symbolize the light in the darkness right and um, and to uh, continue to find that joy and that festivity, that festiveness in the, the darkness, um, in the darkest time of the year, the same way that we would during the light. Um, it is a time when um, we are typically challenged to go within, um, to get still, to get quiet, to um, really reflect on the year, to reflect on our lives. To celebrate our achievements. Um, again, that's why this time of the year is a time of probably the most or the biggest and most lavish celebrations of the whole year, you know, um, between Christmas, Kwanzaa, um, Hanukkah, um, um, different pagan rituals or uh, traditional rituals. I mean, it's so everybody is celebrating. <laughs> No matter what your religion, your your tradition, your whatever, right? Everybody is celebrating um, this time of the year. So um, this time is really a time to to celebrate all that you have accomplished, how you have grown throughout the year, um, e- even some of the losses that you perhaps have had throughout the year. To celebrate those those lives, to celebrate um, your your. Uh, triumphs after trials you know all of those sorts of things this is a time of coming together Um, and so the winter solstice is very very powerful because it is the time in which we also begin to plant the seeds that we would like to see six months from now when we enter the summer solstice now everybody always gets excited during the summer solstice and they're out there in their little you know fairy costumes and what have you that's typically what I've seen, (laughs) you know, and celebrating and, you know, celebrating mother nature and all of these sorts of things, which is beautiful. But what we see in the summer is the result of what happens in the winter. You know, what, what comes to light is the result of what happens in the dark, right? So the dark is a very, very beautiful place. It's a very, very powerful place because, because it is the birthplace of um, your dreams. It's the birthplace of what is to come. All right. So with that being said, this pick a card is all about wisdom and guidance um, for you right now during um, during the winter solstice. What wisdom and guidance is there for you? Also, I pulled a card to see what you may need to release um, any dead weight. You know, just like nature is, is let go of her leaves and, you know, leaves falling from the trees and things appear to be dying in order to make room for Um, new growth. Um, Also in this reading is a card that represents what um, needs to be released um, from your life um, in order for you to grow. And then lastly, the third card is about, you know, a word of empowerment, encouragement and affirmation um, to push you forward. All right. So um, that is it. Make sure you check the description box for um, timestamps. You can go ahead and jump ahead now if you selected, you know, card group one, two or three. And then also I may have a special offer um, down there. I'm working right now on my 2022 offerings as well as my year end offerings. Actually, yeah. Um, for those of you who want your own personal year ahead reading, 
um, you can go ahead and purchase that. I lay down the cards for you and I record it and then I send it to you uh, just a couple of days after your purchase is complete. And, um, and so that's your personal year ahead reading. And that helps you to know, you know, times, um, uh, times that are most, uh, times of the year that are most aligned to you. So I'll kind of use your birthday for that as well. Um, and some astrology with that as well. Um, just wisdom going forward, what you most need to know, do and be aware of in 2022, um, uh, triumphs possible you know doors that are open for you and then some doors that might be closed or some some challenges and obstacles that you need to be aware of um, so that you can uh, move forward with power right and so my readings are always designed to empower and encourage you um, and so yeah that's it if you want that only have I'm only doing a limited number of those so if you want to make sure that you get that make sure that you get that <laughs> I'll go ahead and um, request that from me all right so card group number one here is your winter solstice reading all right so the stack or the 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 stone that is on the top of your uh, your pick a card is a celestite. It's such a pretty, beautiful stone. Um, celestite has a lot of different uh, uses. It is useful. Um, I, I like to use it when I'm bringing balance between like the mundane, the natural physical world with the spiritual or the metaphysical um, world. Um, and I'm just reading some things about it. It says that it is good with um, cleansing the aura it is good for um in times of stress to kind of cleanse the atmosphere or to bring a more harmonious atmosphere um during times of stress um it helps to balance um when you're overly mental too much in your head or even too much um i would say if you're too mm, intellectual and you don't oftentimes allow the spirit side or spirit um, to bring wisdom that this stone is good for that as well now sometimes if you too much in the clouds you might need another stone to kind of balance this I find but um, it also helps you know with bringing you know peace of mind calmness and to speak with clarity because sometimes our words like get trapped in our throats right we can't get the words out that properly convey how we feel and so a celestite is good with helping you to articulate your feelings right all right so the wisdom card that has come forth for you ah is exchanging gifts exchanging gifts is whenever i see this card it, it's literally what it what it says you know it's about exchanging gifts it's about understanding um the importance of giving and receiving it is it's about understanding the importance of um like when you're dealing with other people working with other people whether it's in your job whether it's in you know a community situation whether it's in your your church or you know any organization that you're a part of right exchanging gifts is understanding that you bring something to the table as well as the other person brings something to the table right so even in relationships, it's about making sure that that balance is there, right? So because this card has come up for you for winter solstice, this is a time for you to reflect on how have you been exchanging your gifts? How have you been, you know, has there been a good give and take between you and other people? Do you feel... Um, more drained or do you realize like wow I'm so super blessed and when you think about it, it's like oh that's because I ain't been giving to other folk I've been receiving <laughs> haven't been giving right um, and what I'm feeling too is about acknowledging that you have something to give so often um, in my coaching practice as well I, I do coaching that's not always about astrology or you know oracle and stuff like that somehow I just do business coaching you know or people who have goals that they're trying to achieve and one of the things that I find is that um, they tend to oftentimes be giving more than they're receiving right so they're pouring out their gifts they're pouring out their talents because they want people to understand you know the gifts and talents that they have and that they can be helpful and they you know they want to serve so many people so well um 
and then but they're making pennies doing that because they're not they undervalue their gifts. They undervalue the, the, the blessings that they bring to other people's lives, the change that their skills and their talents bring to other people's lives. So when I see this card, it makes me think like, you know, um, are there areas of your life where you are undervaluing yourself? I do want to read a little bit of what this card actually says so you can get um, your own deeper meaning of that. Exchanging gifts. The law of giving and receiving, currency, trade-offs, weighing costs, and determining value. You're entering into a productive and enriching time when all manner of opportunities are being offered to you. You have everything you need to seize them. Yet in order to honor them, you must put in the time, exchange your experience and skills, and commit heart and soul to what you're choosing to pursue. You can do it. You have what it takes to be successful if you align with the law of giving and receiving. You must ex engage in a dance of give and take, push and pull, doing and being. If you let fear guide your choices, you could deplete yourself or create an imbalance. This is not a time of just do, do, do. Use your currency wisely and be mindful of the value others bring to your life. The relationship message of this card says love is an exchange of life force energy between two beings. It grows exponentially when it's reciprocated. You must give and receive in order for love to flourish and abundance to flow between you. Spirit wants you to start accepting all the blessings waiting for you, as well as offer the same gift in return. Open your heart and allow it to be filled. Let love in and let it flow out of you, too. Love truly love is truly yours today. And the prosperity message of this card says all your hard work and efforts, your commitment to learning, creating and spending your time wisely pay off in ways you may not have been anticipating the gifts of yourself, your time, your ideas and the energy of your intentions are being reciprocated by the universe, which is sending you signs and signals aligning synchronistic meetings and opportunities to bring you success and more. Everything is an exchange. Keep doing what you're doing. Goodwill comes back tenfold. So if you remember that last line that it said, it said everything is an exchange. You know, everything is is an exchange and, you, and it's so important to keep that exchange in a balanced place so what is the challenge you know or what is the dead weight that you may need to release at this time um, in order to go forward and it is a card that says reconcile wow it says love yourself for only then can you love others wow that's already aligning to this exchange and even what i just said about you know when i work with clients a lot of times initially you know they're giving way more than they're receiving you know and this is the same as when um one sees the value of others but don't, doesn't see the value of themselves or they love others but they don't love themselves and there's always going to be an imbalance there's always going to be this imbalance in the exchange of gifts right so the challenge for you is to balance the love for yourself um that it with the love that you have for others so let me read what that card has to say again it says love yourself for only then can you love others the shadow element here is allowing reconciliation of failed interpersonal relationships to commence out of a need for outside acceptance or outright refusal to be alone in the healing process when in fact the need is to be more concerned with accepting oneself there always comes a time when we are given a chance to break away from unsavory relationships with love interests, friends, family dynamics, but we struggle to cut the cord of dependency. Dependency on what exactly? Could be obligation to family, unresolved spiritual ties to past lovers, or just inability to exist in solitude in order to mend what has harmed us within these interactions. This card suggests that you struggle with your need to reconcile toxic relationships before healing due to some arbitrary entitlement someone has with inserting themselves into your life or your dependency on that relationship to feel valid, loyal, or discomfort when disconnecting. 
it suggests your your ability to only recount the good times when someone you're struggling to love from a distance to justify keeping that parasitic connection alive and well feeding on your spirit and ultimately your growth why do you stick around when you know this is not working oh my gosh this really goes hand in hand with this so the, you, you all are challenged to you know, reconcile not only if it's a romantic relationship, it could be business relationships, it could just be how you deal with other people. If you are not receiving the love and energy and time um, in return that you have been giving, then it's an imbalance exchange. And you are challenged at this time of winter solstice. If you go back and listen to, um, if you skipped ahead, I challenge you to go back and listen to the first few minutes of this video where I explain what the winter solstice is. Um, but one of the things I talk about is um, when you look at nature, nature is dying away in order to allow newness to come forth later on in the spring and summer. Right. And so if you're holding on to situations, people, you know, what have you, because you think you need them, you know, you keep trying to prove yourself to your customers. You keep trying to prove yourself to your past lovers. You keep trying to prove yourself to your family members, because for some reason you think that having their validation gives you personal validation then it's time to cut that out that's the act that's the thing that needs to die away that's the the dead weight the heavy weight that you need to release in order to um make the power of this winter solstice be um, beneficial to you so that in the months to come by the time we get to the summer solstice man you'll be really open to more healthier and balanced relationships and my heart is well cared for. Oh my God, these cards. I just love when the cards come together so well like that. <laughs> my heart is well cared for. Really, oh my gosh, it really just solidifies everything I said. You know, some of you may have a fear that you won't be loved or, you know, that you, you're holding on to dead old things because you're afraid that if you let it go, nothing else will come to you that you're unworthy of more and this is saying no you are worthy of so so much more and your heart is well cared for you will always be um as long as you are loving you um you will always be loved you know um and so yes and so for this group i'm gonna definitely suggest that you go down in the um description box go ahead and purchase your own uh, year ahead reading where i look at um all of 2022 for you and i record that reading and send it um, to use a few days after your purchase but I also would recommend that you get my book the magic of self-love if you have not purchased that it is available on Amazon and the link is down below you're welcome right. <laughs> card group number two all right card group number two how y'all doing how y'all doing how y'all doing all right so y'all have an onyx onyx I'm sorry I had to say it for those of you who know you know I'm already telling y'all what generation I came out of. Um, but onyx is a very powerful stone. A lot of times I hear about people using it in terms of protection and, and um, um, you know, gridding their house. You know, you can put onyx all around your house and it adds a, an extra level of, you know, spiritual protection and whatnot around your house. But onyx, um, interestingly enough, is also... And it doesn't get a lot of credit for this. It's a prosperity stone. Who knew? You know, um, it really, um, I'm, I'm actually reading about it right now. But the, one of the ways in which I've used it, um, it can be added with other stones when you're wanting to add abundance, when you're wanting to add prosperity um, into your life and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it actually does work with that. That's, that was very interesting to me. But it helps you to make wise choices. It helps you to, um, like I stated, it helps to um, keep you protected. Um, it gives you strength uh, during, oh, wow, this book even says, I'm actually literally reading a book right now. <laughs> um, it actually says that um, it is a protective stone for dark nights and lonely places, which is so interesting because the solstice itself is the darkest night of the year. You know, if you listen to what I talked about at the very beginning, um, I talked about how it is literally the day where we have more nighttime hours than daylight hours. So it's the darkest day of the year, right? But it gives you that hope within the darkness that you are protected, um, that you, it helps you to make wise choices even when you can't see all of the options. 
you know, so it's, um, it's a very grounding stone as well, keeping you grounded. So I don't know. It's great to have. Everybody should have an onyx. <laughs> so your wisdom card that came forth for you. Ooh, wow. This is interesting. All that glitters. Yeah. Y'all need this. Y'all need this. Y'all need this to make some wise choices because all that glitters ain't gold, you know? Um, this is so interesting. This time of the year is, is so lit up, right? Is if, if you go back and listen to, um, the opening, the first few minutes I did of this whole video, I talked about what the winter solstice is. And I talk about how, you know, traditionally people have always put lights on their houses and on their trees. You know, it wasn't just a Christmas thing. It was a solstice thing, right? It was about, um, being able to still see in the dark. It was about, um, still attracting you know, light and festiveness, even during the darkness. Um, but the interesting thing, though, about this time of year is that it, it can be almost fake. Right? <laughs> a lot of times we lo we we don't even know why we're doing and having a lot of the celebrations that we're having. And um, we can we can mask. Hmm, how do I want to say this? We can mask the real work that needs to be done during this time because we're so caught up in the holiday parties and buying the gifts and you know all of these sorts of things and um i really feel like some of you these masks are really standing out to me some of you are really don't want to face harsh truths because there's this fear just like with the solstice and the darkness of this year, right? There's this fear that you're that of being afraid of the dark, of being afraid of what you will see. So you rather deal with the facade of things. And even though you might be a very real and genuine person, but you might prefer the facade of things and the prettiness of things and the fun of things and the festivity of things uh, rather than um, allowing the true gift of this season Um to which is um, the treasures that the genuine treasures that lie within you to shine, to come forth. You know, the beautiful thing about the winter solstice and why, in my opinion, is I don't want to say it's more powerful than the summer solstice, but it's just it's just its impact is just on another level because everything that's born in the dark is what comes to the light in the summer solstice. You know, what happens in the dark of the winter comes to light in the summer. You know, what happens in the dark of your mind and your heart and your soul is what eventually comes to light. So if you only want to deal with the, the festive glittery stuff, that's not where the real gold is. Everything that glitters ain't gold is usually the thing that's not shiny, that is not standing out, that looks regular and mundane, that is the most powerful thing. You know, like they say, the most powerful person in the room is typically the quietest. It's not the loudest person. Usually it's usually the quietest. Right. So let me read to you what uh, what wisdom this card has for you. What does this card have to say? All that glitters, a need to see beyond the superficial, the desire to don a mask or dress something up to disguise its true nature, trying to be something you're not chasing after every sparkly new thing and being mer mercurial. It's only human. It's only human to want to adorn oneself in trinkets and paint a pretty picture of oneself is natural to want to acquire the trappings of status or to deny them as a statement of rebellion but if it sparkles is it better whether it's a fast car a big house a title or position the stamp of authority or the sparkling of diamonds these icons let you know something about a person place or thing or do they the truth is that people seek to acquire things because what they will do for them and how they symbolically will elevate them and make them more attractive. This card signals that it's time to see beyond the adornments and probe underneath the surface. Learn to recognize the masks people wear and the motives underlying them. Imagine that all the glitter is gone. Would you still desire the object or person? The relationship message of this card says, sometimes we try to become something we're not to impress others. We embellish a story a bit, adding some dramatic elements to make us sound more appealing. The real person becomes hidden behind the sparkle and shine. 
then there are times when we don't see the true value of someone else because he or she may not have the glitz and glamour that seem so desirable. Now is the time to look past the surface, beyond the mask, to the essence of a person. Who that person is, not what he or she has or can give you, is important. See beyond the glitter and look for the inner glow. Use the eyes in your heart. Let go of artifice and let what is authentic shine. The prosperity message of this card says, sometimes an opportunity looks so good that it glitters like gold and you just can't resist it, especially when it appears others are doing so well and have hit the mother load. During the American gold rush, everyone hurried west to find their fortune and then deserted entire towns after mining depleted, after mining after the mining depleted the gold veins in the earth so too can you deplete yourself as you chase after the latest shiny thing that has caught your eye there is a mercurial quality to your present circumstances pay no attention to those who chase after fool's gold resist the temptation to be jealous of others what they have achieved may not be the true success you seek so don't compare yourself to them you see only the surface right now only the sparkle be assured that you will experience your own shining moment if you stick to what you know. All that glitters may not be gold for you. Wow. So this really, as I was reading it, it was making me think like, also, this is the time of year where people are starting to come up with their New Year's resolutions. And they're usually looking down at themselves like, oh, man, I failed to do this. I failed to do that. I failed to do this. Failed to do that. And then you start comparing yourself to other people who seem more successful, who seem to have this, that, and the other. And you're trying to figure out, how can I jumpstart my life? And the, the, the biggest mistake people make when thinking that way is they go, they look at what's glittering. They look at what they think is golden. But that's just what's on the surface. You need to dig deeper, whether it's a relationship that you want to get into and you're just looking at the person on a superficial. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody want who would look good to them. But, <laughs> you know, um, what, what is that person's character? You know, how do they problem solve? Do they have anger problems? Right. You if you're so busy looking at what they look like on the surface, you could miss a whole lot. Right. And and a lot of this also ties into self-worth. A lot of times we look at what was glittering on a superficial level because we haven't truly valued ourselves. Right. And so this is a time and it's hard to value yourself when you don't even go when you don't remove the mask that you are wearing to look at yourself honestly and look at how beautiful you actually are underneath it all. Right. So the the. <laughs> that was your wisdom card. <laughs> I feel like I already read your challenge card, but this is actually your challenge card now that I just picked up, you know, the, the challenge or the obstacle um, or the dead weight. You know, it speaks to the dead weight that you may need to release in order to uh, move forward. And this card says, Ashe, the world was created by one. Right. So I'm going to actually read what uh, this card has to say, because it will actually speak to. Um, the possible blockage or obstacle. If I can find a page. Thank you for your patience. All right, seriously. Here we go. Okay. I say the world was created by one. The shadow element here is not using one's true power and relying on others to make decisions for you. Oh, my gosh. Didn't I say that uh, this onyx is good for decision making? Right. All right. So Ashe is a Yoruba concept, not easily translated to English, but in a base form. It means the divine power, energy and force present in all beings to produce the change they seek. This card is present in the reading as a su suggestion that you may be going through a period in which you don't believe in your personal power and instead you rely on the decisions of others, whether spirits, friends, family, whatever, to make grand decisions for you and to express how much you are capable of doing. It is important to make a mental note of why you may be feeling like you lack the divinity to create the opportunities or outcomes you want for yourself without external out input. Why do you feel... Why do you not feel comfortable taking the initiative to create your world without looking for permission? It is of goodwill utilizing your talents and makes you happy. Why are you allowing, excuse me, I'm going to reread that whole sentence. It says, if it is of goodwill 
(laughs) utilizing your talents and makes you happy? Why are you allowing others to live your life for you by planning your power? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Y'all, 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 y'all. Uh, you, you might be looking at other people, other, other people who are more successful than you or people that you feel have what you, you know, you want or what have you because they're glittering and they're golden, you know, and they might really be golden, right? You know, some, all the glitters ain't gold, but sometimes the glitter actually is gold. But the point here for you is it doesn't matter whether it's gold or not. The point is to remember that you are golden, your own personal power your own power to make wise choices for yourself is time for you to believe in yourself like never before if you've had self-doubts you didn't believe in your own personal power this card is really calling for you to uh, step forward into that and to really use this darkness of this solstice period this um, couple of days here um, to really get take the mask off yourself and find who you truly are what you truly like what you truly value and highlight that and love on that and so your empowerment card wow okay (laughs) wow money loves to be in my company well that's interesting so if you go back and listen to the prosperity message of this card all that glitters it kind of speaks to this if you've been chasing money And you've been not being yourself or not being authentic in your business or in your career decisions because you think, oh, I got to do this to get money or I got to do that to get money. I can't be myself and get money. I got to put on, wear a mask, wear a facade, all this other kind of stuff. If you understand that money loves to be in your company, right? Well, my company, read it for yourself. Money loves to be in my company, right? If you understand that, then you can be yourself and prosper, You can be yourself making wise choices, standing in your own personal power and prosper because money loves to be in your company. Right. So click down below in the description box. I have a few um, slots open for a year ahead reading. I only do these do those once a year. So if you want your own personal year ahead reading, which is way more comprehensive than this and it's personal to you. Go ahead and purchase that. I will record it and then send it to you a few days after your purchase is complete. Um, And like I said, I'm only doing a limited number of those because why? Because 2021 is upon us. (laughs) And I don't like to do them too much, you know, into uh, once the year starts. I do a few of them then, but not a whole lot. So if you want to make sure that you are in there, make sure that you go ahead and click down below and do that. Also purchase my book, The Magic of Self-Love. If you don't have that, it's available now on Amazon. And that link is in the description box. All right, all right, all right. Group number three. Those of you who have selected group card group number three, y'all have a malachite. Isn't this beautiful? This is a malachite egg. Let's see. Let me tell y'all what malachite's all about. So Malachi is all about ooh, healing emotional weaknesses. Um, it can help open your heart chakra to make you um, or to help you to be able to give and receive love um, and that kind of deep, intimate love. Um, it helps to bring in abundance and prosperity, usually wherever it's something that opens up the heart chakra to bring in love it usually can help to open up the <laughs> the gateways of money as well but it's also a stone um, that brings uh, protection um, and help you to deal with um, some of those like past traumas that might be you know still sticking around so malachite you know it's a beautiful stone if you don't have one make sure you get one so your wisdom card that has come forth for you on this winter solstice Ooh, observer, observer. This is, this is really like a winter solstice card because, you know, if you, if you skipped ahead, make sure you go back and listen to the first few minutes of this video. I talk about what the winter solstice is, and it really is a time for solitude of quietness of, of going within. Yes, we have lots of celebrations during this time of year, and there's lots of festivities and lights and, you know, all kinds of things going on. But the winter solstice is really the time to um, get quiet and to go within and to do more meditating than usual. It is literally the darkest day of the year. If you have more um, 
day uh nighttime hours then we have daylight hours literally so um the winter solstice um is the time when you go within and and it is a time when you can receive divine messages that will actually give you the strategies on what to what to do and how to um how what steps to take over the next few months that bring about blessings and opportunities into your life right but most people don't want to sit down long enough and get quiet long enough to hear the messages so observer really speaks to that it's about being observant it's about you know when you are are an observer you're quiet you're paying attention you know you're not loud you're not all over the place you're focused look at this I guess this is a wolf with a telescope Wolves are known for um, being cunning and clever, right? And, and and this wolf with the telescope is is looking towards the heavens, right? Look, literally looking to um, the moon. The moon in astrology really represents like the subconscious mind and um, the hidden things, things people miss, things people don't see. You know, the observer sees, the observer catches, right? So it's really a time for you to be more observant because there's things around you. Um, that if you pay attention will give you wisdom and guidance that you need, right? <laughs> but if you too loud and listen to everything and just, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, you could miss it. So it's really a time about, you know, being a, a quiet observer, you know, and paying attention to the signs um, that are all around you. So let me read to you what, um, oh, I turn straight to the page. I'm going to read to you what um, the wisdom uh, what this card says it says observer perspective objectivity neutral observation from a distance most people see the world through a personal lens they closely identify with their feelings and experiences so much so that they come to believe that these are the only reality there are times when you need distance in order to gain perspective and understanding your circumstances from a more neutral vantage point. Now is one of those times in your life. This is a perfect moment for you to begin to do some exploring. Instead of only considering yourself, consider what you need to understand about the conditions, people, culture, and environment you're engaged with now. You'll be so happy you did. Illumination is the miracle you seek and will indeed find. The relationship message of this card says, sometimes you just can't see the forest for the trees in your way. Feelings can get all jumbled up and often you hear one thing when a person says another. It can be like an echo of an unresolved past experience dubbed over your conversation. Take time out before you react. It's likely the other person has no idea how his or her words have affected you. Take a few steps back and lend understanding to the situation. Have faith in your connection and trust that you can come together. Take to higher ground and now take to higher ground now and cultivate curiosity about what you observe in yourself and others and in the landscape. You will find things much improved sooner sooner than you know. And lastly, the prosperity message of this card says it is an advantageous time for you to get some distance from what you from what you're doing and see your work and your projects from a different perspective. The trick is to connect to the essence of your goals and aspirations while letting the form and timing be dictated by spirit. You may be too personally attached to an outcome and unable to see the miracle because it's not turning out exactly as you plan. Trust spirit. The perfect version of your abundance is right in front of you. Remain neutral and curious and watch the miracle unfold. I want to add because it talked about how, you know, you can hear one thing when somebody is saying another. And Malachi, I, I specifically said, and I almost didn't say this, but I remember saying that it helps to deal with past traumas, right? So some of you who've selected this card group, you might have past traumas. Now, I know traumas is a big word. It don't have to be traumatic. You know, it could just be something that, you know, trauma, it, it left an impact on you. And you're like, man, I'll never deal with somebody like this or I'll never, you know, or I won't start that business because, you know, my uncle had a business and he went out of business, lost everything. You know what I mean? Like we you create beliefs. You you might have beliefs. It's so interesting. This is facing the moon because the moon deals with your inner beliefs on the subconscious mind. 
you might have beliefs that are blocking you, you know, and so it's time to observe and figure out like, what are my real beliefs? Like, what do I really believe about money, about love, about relationships, about, you know, um, how I should be, about what it means to be healthy, about what it means, you know, to achieve goal, you know, whatever, about every area of life, what it means to be a mother, what it means to be a father, what it means, you know, to be a friend, you know, what are your beliefs? What beliefs do you carry with you through life? Beliefs are much deeper than, you know, your religious beliefs or what have you, spiritual beliefs. But what do you, what beliefs do you have that are impacting how you function in life? And if those beliefs aren't serving you or they're blocking you, take, take note of that. Be aware, you know, so when you're an observer, you're not, you know, just an observer of other people. You are an observer of yourself, right? And the winter solstice is all about going within, you know? So it's so important that you do this work if you want to move beyond where you are at this time, right? But it's so powerful when you do it. It's such, it's such a powerful work to do. The challenge card, woo. The challenge card or the thing that could be the dead weight. If you go back and listen to what I said at the beginning of this video, I talked about the winter solstice and, you know, the uh, it is a releasing of dead weight and old things. Because that's what nature is doing, right? Nature is, is dying away in order for something new to come forth. And so the thing that needs to die away from you um, is explained in this card here called plenty. So let me read to you what plenty has to say. I already kind of know this card has come up for uh, so in some of my uh, personal readings for people, um, but it deals with a lack mentality, you know, overcoming that lack mentality. So Plenty says a trifle grows where nothing else will sprout. The shadow element here is even though you may have accomplished much in your life, you're yearning for more wealth, not specific to money fuels your fire to your own detriment many people get the verse money is the root of all evil completely wrong it is not money that is the root of evil because the full quote says for the love of money is the root of all evil which means that the love of it the greed is the problem this card is the this card is for the success junkies and the social validation hoarders. I'm sure you have seen rise and grind and the quote millionaire mentality motivational quotes littered across your feed, informing you that unless you are building immeasurable wealth or social status, that somehow your life is wasted. But what does that mean to be obsessed with success? It goes beyond being comfortable. It is a means of validating your entire existence if you are in a constant state of acquiring new wealth, material trophies, and status. This card suggests that you are currently getting lost in the rat race of perceived success, even if it's just a means to prove that you can do it. If you come from meager if you come from meager means and want to be a quote somebody, your guides are asking you to establish why you feel this need to run the never ending race or establish your own definition of personal success outside of manufactured abundance, such as money, material goods, social media applause, external praise, etc. etc. So, this is speaking to. Um, this is really, to me, looking at these two together, it's like really observe, um, getting, like I said before, observing yourself more than you're observing other people, you know what I mean? Shine that lens on yourself, your innermost thoughts, feelings, fears, and especially where, as it relates to either money or, or social success, you know, um, because, the challenge and what this winter solstice is, is, is challenging you to understand is that abundance and plenty and validation and a, a social acknowledgement um, does not have to come at the detriment of, you know, everything else. Like you don't have to just grind, 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 hustle, 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 get it, get it, get, you know what I mean? Um, because you actually end up losing more um, through that process. 
um, because you're seeking validation from something outside of you. So it's not against having success or having money, but it's really about understanding what is really motivating you. Is it is it a fear of poverty? Is it a fear of lack? Is it a fear of failure? And so you're just going so hard because you refuse to be, you know, you know, like maybe somebody in your past or, you know, a family member, what have you, that you saw as a failure. You know what I mean? Or maybe you're the first one in your family to do something really great. So you're so driven that um, you could miss the meaning behind what's motivating you. You know what I mean? What, what, uh, you may misunderstand what's really motivating you. You might think it's all about success and doing well and coming up and using your talents for good and all this kind of stuff. But really what might be motivating you is a fear of lack, a fear of not having, a fear of success or failure, right? So that is the challenge or um, the obstacle that that this winter solstice is telling you to go within and to address so that you can move forward on your pathway to success in a way that is um, more harmonious and is not driven by fear, you know, is more so driven by your purpose. And so your word of wisdom, ah, your empowerment affirmation is I ask for what I want. <laughs> I ask for what I want. This to me also speaks to being honest. Like in order for you to ask for what you want, you got to be honest about what you really want. And um, if you say you want success, if you say you want money, if you say you want achievements, be more specific about that. You know, ask yourself, why do I want what I want? And then ask for what you want. You know, make that your petition, make that your your prayer. But if your prayer is just please help me to be successful, please let me have more money, you know, or what have you. First, I would suggest you observe the why, you know what I mean, and get clear about that and then ask for what you want, because what what you want will come. But if you're asking, if you're saying I want more success, I'm just using that as an example, I want more money. And that 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 prayer that request that asking that petition is really fueled by the fear of not having it then it will actually create more of that fear like you'll find yourself on this hamster wheel that you can't get off of right and you might actually be getting more money but at what cost what cost of your peace of mind and your freedom and you know your health and your relationships and you know on down the line right so just know you have the power to ask for what you want. I would just suggest that you get more clear about why you want what you want so that when you ask for what you want, you can ask more clearly. All right. So thank y'all. Make sure um, I do have a few slots for my year, my personal year ahead readings. So if you want that, um, make sure that you get that. Because I try not to do too many of them after we cross over into the new year. So if you want your own personal year ahead reading, make sure that you request that. And then I will record that reading personally for you and send it to you a few days after your um, your purchase has, has, has is completed. All right. And so also down below, uh, if you haven't yet gotten my first masterpiece, my first book, The Magic of Self-Love, make sure you get that as well. That is available on Amazon. And so I will make sure that link is down below. All right. So that is it for our Winter Solstice readings. Thank you everyone for watching. Make sure you share uh, this video with those who you think might benefit from this. And until we speak again, as always, I'm wishing you so much peace and love. Thanks for watching.